You know what time it is. It's Stephen King time, baby. Y'all ready to fill some Castle Rock Radio? Well, folks, did you hear that noise? That was the sound of uh, Stephen King's The Stand, uncut and ribbed for your pleasure. <laughs> Held back. I believe it's about three pounds. It, 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 at least, if not <sighs> five or six. Oh, you know what? It might be. I was watching an interview with... Uh, not an interview. I was watching that movie about David Foster Wallace called The End of the Tool with uh, Jason Siegel is playing him. I was watching that a few days ago and uh, there's a scene where he goes to a radio interview and the, the, the guy goes, so, infinite jest, three pounds and five ounces, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> I don't know how weight looks, obviously, <laughs> look at me. Uh, <laughs> But, I mean, this is probably the same length as uh, Infinite Jest. Yeah, Infinite Jest is 1,200, and this is almost 1,200. Oh, by the way, my name is Max Booth. Is it? I'm Lori Michelle. And you are listening to Castle Rock Radio, the podcast where we begin every episode by throwing a book on the ground. <laughs> I am surprised it's spine didn't crack in half. I'm surprised su- you didn't crack your toe in half. I'm surprised it didn't go through the floor. It, something would have happened. So, this is a podcast where uh, you and I, we, we uh, pick something Stephen King has written or a movie related to his book, and we kind of go through a plot, and we have fun with it. Absolutely. I wasn't going to say anything important. It's a podcast. No one says anything <laughs> 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 uh, So... With that said, obviously, I don't think we need a, I don't think we need a rehash. What's going on in the world right now? No. I mean, there's a little play going on. So we thought, actually, we were uh, planning on doing the stand before any of this happened. But then we, uh, uh, just we got we lost track of time. But now, uh, you don't have a job at the moment. <laughs> yeah, you almost don't have a job I at am, the moment. <laughs> I am holding on. My one finger at, at the moment with uh, my hotel job, they're cutting out dramatically, uh, they're letting people go. I will probably be the last one to be let go before uh, the hotel closes because I do the night shift and no one wants that. Exactly. It'll probably be me and then after I'm gone, there'll be management left and that's it. And they won't last. No. So at the moment I have a job, at the moment you do not. Uh, all my freelance bulk is drying up. What about you? Um, right now, my freelance work is going pretty strong, but I'm afraid that after I finish the backlog I have right now, I may not have anything. Yeah, I don't believe you. I, uh, I, mean, I, I don't know. I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't blame them. Uh, the local newspaper I write for, the uh, freelance budget has been uh, annihilated. Uh, yeah. The one website I write for, uh, Crime Reads, they have uh, put a freeze on accepting any new pitches for the time being. And, <laughs> and yeah. You know, we're heading into a... Horrible recession. Pretty bad time. Yeah. So what would be a better way to uh, pass this uh, awful <laughs> time by doing uh, maybe Stephen King's best novel? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't read it I, uh, all yet, so I, I can't uh, answer that I question. I did when I was a little tiny kid. I don't remember much about it. Well, that doesn't count. So The Stand... Is, I think we talked. We said that already. <laughs> you said, well, you dropped it on your toe, so I assume people is that why my it toe out. is bleeding? Yes. <laughs> we do need to go to a hospital. Uh, we may not be able to get inside. No. So yes, we're reading uh, Stephen King's uh, infamous plague novel. I believe it was uh, published at a time and before this. <laughs> Maybe it was just foreshadowing. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, shut up. <laughs> It was published in 1978. However, we'll be doing the uh, complete and uncut version, which was published in 1990. Right. And I don't, obviously, I don't know what was changed because I've never read the original edition. You know, um, my parents have the original edition. I wonder if they still own it. Oh, should we read both of them? Yes. No. No, I I don't know. I remember my mom being so excited when the uncut one came out and I... What did she think of it? I... I don't recollect because I was young at the Digital time. Digital medal for a uh, cut or uncut? <laughs> I'm not going to go into that, Max. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not going to do the whole entire stand in this podcast right here. We're going to this episode. We're going to be doing like about 50 pages at a time. 
So this particular episode will cover chapters one through five. Plus the, plus, uh, and the prologue. prologue. Which I don't think was in the cut edition. I think the opening, which we will get into momentarily, was uh, not included. Okay, that could be. I know other things not included were like... I think the uncut edition just has like additional chapters with the kill tools, kind of like Maybe. giving them more room to breathe, which is a funny thing to say in a plague <laughs> novel. And uh, I think he updated some of the, refer- the references. I think so. I don't. I don't know. I don't think it's that important. No, probably not. If anything sticks out, we will probably notice. <laughs> no, it's pretty funny. Uh, not even a month ago when. Maybe two months ago, when we first began reading this stand, I had mentioned, ah, it'd be pretty cool to get a, uh, a tattoo of those uh, good versus evil uh, icons at the line right. of the Don't think I'm getting a tattoo anytime soon. No. I do know, like, the day after we started reading this, I woke up with a horrible cold. <laughs> I believe... I don't know why I paused to take a sip of bottle. No one can see me. <laughs> I, be- I believe. <laughs> I believe. Uh, what the fuck was I saying? I don't know. The, the filled along we get with this book, and the filled along we get with the uh, COVID nineteen uh, pandemic. Uh, the more paranoid we're going to get. I'm I'm already paranoid, so I'm interested to see how we all are behaving. The long will we all quarantine together. Well, so far, I haven't killed anybody. Well, I'm also at work some of the time. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the book that made Stephen King stop writing a novel I've always wanted to read from him. And that was The House on Value Street, which was like a fictionalized take on the whole Patty Hulst uh, kidnapping. Mm-hmm. I've always been kind of bummed being able to look at that novel. It'd be interesting to see how he would I bet write you, that. I bet you it would have been like a Bachman novel. Probably. It's, it, it screams Bachman all over it. But he, uh, he, I don't know, he had some Reynolds block, I guess, and he just got too obsessed with this idea of the stand, which was supposedly going to be like his version of the world of uh, the flies, but with an American setting. Makes sense. Excuse me, the rings, not the flies. Well, actually, both make sense. I mean... Elaborate. Well, the Lord of the Flies is these boys trapped on an island, killing each other. Speaking of sense, <laughs> patreon.com slash Publishing. Uh, give us what you have. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Speaking of money, isn't it great how we just invented money one day and thought, yeah. Yeah, that's a thing. That's not going to backfire. <laughs> Uh, that scene will heading into a direction where the next version of currency will be a toilet paper rolls, though. Luckily, we have several. I could also steal some from my hotel if we get desperate. Should we be selling t- TP rolls from the hotel? Maybe. Maybe. But what? <laughs> but how do you sell currency? I don't know. You can't sell someone money, can you? I don't know. Is that know. what a pyramid scheme is? Well, I think you could barter with it. With money? So if I give you this money, you'll give me this money? Yes. What the fuck? I know. What the fuck? Mind blown, right? I've been blown from the old to <laughs> the other side of the room. You can see the stain. <laughs> <laughs> so I really like how the stand opens. With the prologue, yes. If anyone was watching right now, they would have seen me open the stand. And that's Ta-da! how it opens. <laughs> Uh, the dedication is uh, for Tabby, the dark chest of wonders. Do you think he's talking about little breasts? Yes. Most likely. <laughs> Stephen King, you hound dog. So are we just going to read this out loud, the whole thing? No. I think that's what this podcast should be. We should illegally uh, make an audiobook of the stand. No, I love how, I love the prologue, which is called The Circle Opens. Right. Which, I mean, what could that mean? means the circle has been opened. <laughs> I've been in many open circles, and let me tell you, lots of stains. <laughs> Speaking of being blown. <laughs> yes. Uh, fuck me. Uh, the stand, the prologue, it opens with this guy who built in, the gov- in, a, in a secret uh, government military base. Right. And he's uh, waking up his wife in the middle of the night. I mean, the first line in the book is Sally. Because it's in dialogue. No, really? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> He's waking the wife up and saying, hey, get the baby, get dressed, we gotta go right we now. We gotta go right now. It is super intense. You don't have time to get dressed, grab some stuff, let's go. What would you grab if I woke you up in the middle of the night and said, hey, we gotta go? I, you know, I don't know. Oh, you can't, you don't know? 
my cell phone, <laughs> my cord. <laughs> you go to you go for your cell phone. You you go for your children. Well, uh, that's Jesus with, Christ. My children, I could yell to get up and get their own stuff. Let's go. How often can you wake your son up by yelling at him? I'd be like, don't half the time now. you have to slap him with a pan. <laughs> And that's why my pans are in his bedroom. That's why all your pans are face shaped. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why those pancakes look like noses? Mm, I was gonna ask you about that. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, there's, there's the prologue. I mean, there's not much uh, content to really talk about, but it's just this the guy, urgency. Ch- this guy Charlie, waking up his wife and saying, "We gotta go now because everything's about to go on lockdown." Because, well. I guess they invented this flu. Is that what's going Some on? Some sort now? of a super virus. Did they come up with this virus? This it's, government? I believe it sounds like the government came up with this virus and they accidentally let it loose. It was pr- it's probably like some type of a uh, uh, rule weapon. They probably it's probably some on. biological warfare. It's all really close to home right now because right now I'm writing a book about Los Alamos, which is also in like an enclosed military right. base, and we're also doing dual weapons. So hmm. I'm not saying I'm right in the next stand. But it is it, called The Set. <laughs> that was so stupid. That looks pretty bad, Max. <laughs> well, that's why that's why the uh, loyal podcast listeners come back to the show. Is that week why and week again. Is? Yes. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's a shield opening. It's brief. It's a great opening to what is... I'm looking at to be a huge book. Have you seen how many pages this it's is? It's pretty damn I've large. Lost count. It's at least eight. <laughs> so we go on to part one then. Oh, it's just it's nice that he didn't give like a whole lot of exposition at all in the prologue. It's very short, very quick, very we just gotta go. We've gotta go. And not a lot is explained. I mean, you kinda can infer what he's getting after, but there's not a like huge paragraphs of exposition. I love the last line of the prologue. Which, this is after they've already like driven through the gate and shit to get out because everything's going on like red alert. Right. The last line of the prologue is by dawn they were running east across Nevada and Charlie was coughing steadily. Right. So you know that he's sick. Now you know I've caught like I've coughed like three times already. I'm sure this podcast. you are probably gonna kill us all. I mean, we've known that a while. I mean, that's why the podcast listeners come back week and week again. And one day, someone will kill someone. Somebody. Uh, book one is called Captain Trips, and it takes place between uh, June 16th and July 4th, 1990. That's all Ooh, birthday. It is. Not 1990, but July 4th. July 4th. Uh, we have the same birthday. That is not yes. a joke. It's just an odd coincidence. It is very strange. I do like how they have a... Uh, he has a quote... What do you call a, a quote in the beginning of a book? I I know, but I can't yeah, think of it off the, um, off the top of my head. An epitaph, I think. No, that's a mm. <laughs> tombstone. What's going to be on your epi- tombstone? Probably nothing, because we won't be able to afford to put anything on, on there. On top of my tombstone will be, I can't believe it's not delivery. <laughs> Wait, no, that's the round pizza. <laughs> can't believe it's not DiGiorno. <laughs> yeah. Well, tombstone's also a pizza. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine breaking into a grocery store during a pandemic like this, and the only pizza you find is Tombstone. Be kind you of have ominous. To, you have to laugh. I'd be, I'd be laughing to nobody, mm. because everybody else would be dead. Though you did go to the store the other day to buy frozen pizza, and the <laughs> only one left was goat cheese and spinach. That is really true. <laughs> no one, I mean, it was completely stuck. Not a Gross. single soul had touched it. You could have licked it and not gotten sick. <laughs> That's disgusting. It might be good, I don't know. I don't, I just... The thought of eating goat cheese on a pizza is just kind of gross to be I don't know if I've had goat cheese. Have you? I have. It's just, it's not as creamy. How do you know how you like cream? Yes, of uh, course. <laughs> what, did we decide what the fucking quotes will call No, we never did. <laughs> Whatever. So uh, on the page that has, you know, book one, Captain Trips, June to July, there's a quote from a man named Lily Underwood. Yes. And the quote is, baby, can you dig your man? He's a righteous man. Baby, can you dig your man? And now right now you don't know who the fuck that is, but I think it's pretty cool that he's quoting a kill tool from within the book. Right. Pretty smooth, Steve King. Ooh. So chapter one is taking place. Well, what's the prologue? Do we know? Um, I don't know if it said or not. I don't think it says. No, we don't have anything. But it's probably been a few days, I think. 
Yeah, probably. So the pro, uh, chapter one is uh, taking place at a gas station just outside of Old Nant, Texas. Right. Is this a real place? I don't think so. But, I mean, they're talking about a calculator factory, which is where Texas Instruments is up North Texas. So I'm no, assuming... a calculator is not uh, instruments. What do you mean? Texas Instruments is a calculator manufacturer. That doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry. Do so they mean... make instruments, too? <laughs> Calculating instruments. Wait a second. <laughs> We're talking about a calculator factory this whole time in the, the book. Yes. I'm thinking, like, mathematical calculators. Yes. Am I wrong, Gil? No. Then what the fuck are you talking about? Mathematical calculators. Calculating How is instruments. That an in- what do you mean, calculating instruments? That's like how many you have in stock? Like I have eight <laughs> instruments. If I give no. two away, I'll have six. A calculator is an instrument for math. Shut the fuck up. Serious. <laughs> You're like one of those assholes on Twiddle who go, ah, technically it's after midnight, so it already is tomorrow. No, I would never say that because I don't go to sleep till like 3 a.m. anyway. <laughs> Regardless, it'll say calculator plant yes which is owned by an instrument company i don't know whatever you <laughs> texas said. instruments it's a famous calculator maker in- industries a paper product factory and this instrument electronic calculator <laughs> some type of music instrument that does numbers i don't know so uh the paper factory has been shut down the calculator plant is on hell times probably because they don't know what they do <laughs> Uh, it's just, it's, uh, it's bad times all around. I mean, it's not uh, compatible to right now at all, is no, it? No, not at all. Um, the, like, the mascot of the town, the, peop- the, the, the kid everybody talks about and looks up to, is this guy named uh, Eddie Warfield? You say the last name. Eddie I Warfield. Say it again, because I was talking. Eddie Warfield. He's a local kid who went on to play professional football for Green Bay, but now he owns a chain of food fast food restaurants across the west and southwest well fancy i mean him. that's what everybody has to look up to <laughs> maybe yeah. one day if i play my college straight i will own a fast food restaurant a chicken restaurant well what type of food do you think he has i, I mean, don't his last know. name is woolfield do you think yeah. he has like wool themed food? yes here's a atomic taco bazooka nuggets there you go <laughs> <laughs> mustard gas Hey, yellow mustard, mustard yeah. gas, uh, honey <laughs> mustard gas. <laughs> Maybe that's what you. I've had that <laughs> <laughs> last night. As a matter of fact, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, so the uh, one of the main protagonists of this book we get introduced to in chapter one is uh, Stu Redman. He right. is uh, he built at this ominously vague calculator plant. Sitting with the he in uh, in chapter one, he's sitting with the rest of the locals, having a having some booze, shooting the shit. And uh, well, let's see, he's at a gas station. They're at the gas station. Yeah, it's it's the, like a gas station, like with a convenience store that's got like a bar in it. It reminds me of this gas station I went to uh, last time I drove to Dallas by myself. They had like this guy just sitting on the uh, rock and chill, uh, playing some country music and a guitar. Nice. <laughs> Because it was Texas, they have all ties. They had the bet the best barbecue in all of Texas. They, every gas station every, claims that. <laughs> every barbecue restaurant claims that. <laughs> I don't know if it's true. <laughs> uh, so Stu, some little background on him. We find out he's been milking since the age of nine. His entire family is dead. His wife and mom died from the same type of cancel. Only one brother of his managed to make it out of the town. And he never even writes Stu. Right. So Stu... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the same brother Stu had turned down a football scholarship full so he could continue supporting him. After the mom died, this is the brother that left town doesn't even talk to Stu. He lives the fucking saddest life possible. Poor it's like guy. King just thought, okay, I'm going to listen to some, some Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to see what happens. <laughs> It just gets sad and sad, like within two pages. He's got like no hope left. It's like I'm surprised he doesn't be all black and write poetry. Maybe he does. We don't know. Oh man, maybe Stu's not really a poet's name. No, not really. He'd have to go by Stuart, and they go. What do you mean, Stuart? Stuart. Oh, like my name's Stu, but I also do alt. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real name he came up with. Oh, yeah. Uh, Charlie, the guy from the prologue, 
he uh, he crashes into the gas pumps, right? Right. But it's kind of cool how they uh, how Stephen King, the author of this novel, writes this scene because uh, everybody's talking about just random shit in town. But Stu is kind of looking at this vehicle heading to the the way from a you know afar. Uh, yeah, that's the world. He's like, huh? That guy's driving like a maniac. Right, and he goes, hey, man, you probably want to turn off your gas pumps. <laughs> yeah, as it becomes more evident that he's heading straight for them, and uh, no one's listening to him for some reason. Uh, so Stu gets up and hits the big uh, gas button, just as the uh, vehicle crashes through the gas pumps. And luckily, there's no fiery inferno. Yeah, unluckily, uh, Trolley is almost dead. His wife and baby are already right, dead. Right, they're on the floorboard, and their neck is swollen up, and... It's turned, they've turned a funny shade of color. And... Now, why is it funny? You were laughing at this? It I didn't find it comical at all. That's odd. Yes, of course. See, this is why we have two guests on this, uh, two hosts on this podcast. Is that why? Because the difference of opinion. You find some things funny, I don't find it funny at all. Har har. What do you mean by that? <laughs> uh, so, so, so this is Texas, and they made it from California to Texas. But there's also a line symbol in this chapel how they also went to Salt Lake City first. Now, in that, I'm not great with geography. I mean, but that isn't a straight line, is it? No, not really. And it's kind of weird that they would have gone to Salt Lake City first, unless they went up I-15 and then cut across to Texas. Yeah, but this is in the '80s. So were roads around then? Yes, roads were around then. Come <laughs> my God. <laughs> I mean, it's not impossible for them to have gone to Salt Lake City first. It's just not a straight shot, especially if they were from San Diego. I, did they say why they went to Salt Lake City? No, I don't recollect. So how long of a drive would this have been? How long um, have they been going? Like two or probably a couple of days. Maybe three at the very most. I mean, if they're driving to save their life, they're not taking a leisurely stroll. They're driving, you know. Like, we can make it from California to Texas in 24 hours. Less. Depending on which way you're driving. You're making about 17. Yeah. So, see, the... Probably two days at most, I would say. They, they took a side trip to <laughs> Salt to, Lake City. They had to go visit the Mormon Tabernacle. Come on. Maybe they had a, a Rydals convention. Maybe they, maybe they did. That's the only time I've ever been to Salt Lake City was the, uh, the only time I've... Rydals convention of 2012. Yep. Yep. It's the only time I've ever been to Salt Lake City. Was it in 12 or was it 2011? It was 2012. Oh, yes. Okay. Because I moved to Texas. That's in right, 2011. 2011. And then we went to Salt Lake City, and then we went to California. <laughs> uh, so that's the end of chapter one, basically. Uh, right. The guy dies. I mean, this would have also been a good way to open the book, because I guess in the cut version, this is how it opened. It Which would make sense, right? It would have been, would have been fine, but it's still the uh, extra prologue. It does add something kind of cool. It adds a great. Right. Theme, basically, well, what you, to expect. You know that these guys didn't die just of the common flu. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, you these people that have died, you know it wasn't something just it's, normal. It what's Skelial, though? Come to think I about it. Don't Maybe know. it is Skelial if you don't know it's a government thing. Maybe. I don't know. Why don't you know this? This I is a don't know this is a podcast. You need to come prepared, okay? I'm People, so sorry. The listeners are expecting us to know all these things. Don't know. Let's uh, read it again, but from the last page backwards. I don't think the book would make any sense. Chapter two, we get introduced to a new kill. It's all named Fran. Franny. Franny. What's the last name? I don't know. Now we'll do uh, She lives in Maine, which is an odd state for Stephen King to write about. <laughs> Strange. I was quite surprised how, how uh, bold it was. Well, this is to make a bold dream. choice to go how to Maine. How do you say the name of this town? Algonquits. Hmm. That's odd. Why is that odd? I don't know. I don't like things that begin with O. <laughs> well, just, odd ah, begins with O. Fuck. <laughs> I'm caught. <laughs> and this is. This whole chapter is basically she's uh, meeting up with old boyfriend who has bi- right. who has bicycled from in out of town, and uh, they've they're meeting like by the ocean. Yes. So an ocean in Maine. Yes, there's an ocean in Maine. Yeah, what yeah. ocean? The Atlantic Ocean. All right, so you, you win this <laughs> round. <laughs> I don't know if it was a pond. <laughs> no, there's actually an ocean. A little uh, quag mile. <laughs> okay. Uh, and she's telling him that uh, she's pregnant now. Right. 
And he's like, a what? I didn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> and uh, she has a great, uh, a great, <laughs> a great, <laughs> god damn it, a great line that I saved. And she said, and behold, a virgin shall conceive. Now, right. what do you think about that? <laughs> She's like, yeah, you asshole, you had something to do with it. Who do you think his asshole had something to do with it? I don't think his asshole had anything to but do with it. That's how babies were made. No. Two assholes rubbed together <laughs> yes. until a flame is ignited. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Speaking of Los Alamos. <laughs> uh, is this when he sh- he slaps him? When she I, said I think so. At one point, he slaps a little across the face full of being a small ass. Right. It, it probably like, was there because it's kind of a smart ass line. God but I mean, it's damn. needed. But And she's like, get the fuck out of my life, basically. Yeah. I mean, if that wasn't the final sign, right. what would it be? Yeah. Uh, and she's like mad because he's like, well, what do you want me to say? Do you want me to t- marry you and take care of you? And she's like, no. And he's like, well, do you want to have an abortion? She's like, no. He's like, well, what do you want me to do? I don't know. Just get the fuck out of my life. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't know if he comes back into the book. I'm hoping not. He was kind of a pretentious prick. I don't like my kills to be uh, conflicted at all. I like them to be all likable. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I know I can't read this book without uh, visualizing uh, Molly Ringwald playing uh, Franny, because I don't know if you've seen the miniseries. You know, I have not. You probably will at some point. Well, since we're stuck in quarantine, we probably have lots of time to do it. I watched it a few times as a kid. I used to rent it from my library. It's really long. Yeah. I know you'll surprised that. by yes, this. Yes, um, it's amazing to me to hear that. Really? Yes. I would have thought it had been a short 30-minute episode. Now, why do you think that? <laughs> it's called sarcasm. What is it? <laughs> no. So the next chapter, we're introduced to Norm Bruitt. Who's that? I Wasn't believe he at the gas station? He was at the gas station as well. He's from Arnett. Texas? Arnett, Texas. <laughs> Did you see that? Uh, I mean, for anyone listening to this in the year 2021, Phil Stabell, how did you get uh, internet? Uh, <laughs> secondly, uh, right now, obviously, the little recording of this during the uh, coronavirus pandemic. Right. During um, a bout of self isolation. And uh, Mike Judge, the creator of um, King of the Hill, he just uh, made an image and he posted it online. I Did saw that. It? Yeah, uh, where all the four characters are really spaced apart. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Hank and Bill and the... Whoever the other two are. <laughs> Dale and uh, Boom Heil. Mm. Boom... Boom Hour. Yeah. Well, yeah, they'll we'll stand in six feet of the belt. Yeah. <laughs> really funny. <laughs> yeah, Nilma, I don't re- remember this chapter all that well. It's not that long, but it's like he's at home and... Uh, there's just a lot of fucking end bombs. Yeah. A lot of N-bombs. A lot of N-bombs. That's, what, of you bombs. That's yeah. what you call them in the biz. Is that what they are? I don't know. Mm. <laughs> I don't feel comfortable going mm. filled with what I just But he said. wakes up and he's uh, got like a horrible headache. He's a coffin. He's he got a nose full of snot. He should probably stay home from milk that family. Probably. He should, he, should, he should self-isolate. Yeah. But he doesn't. And he's pissed because he has to take care of his kids because his wife has gone off to babysit somebody else's kids. Yeah, he's, he's so mad about this. Right. And he, he uses a lot of the N-word. I forget no about reason. what. I think he, yeah, he's just pissed about it. It's kind of like how my mom and dad talk. Like, instead of saying, ah, you fucking piece of shit to, like, a toast till it isn't milking, you go, ah, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then a local cop from that gas station... He comes to the gas station. Goes, oh, yeah, we uh, it's a scene break. Yes. Excuse me. He goes to the gas station, this cop... He goes, hey, just a heads up, the health department might want to take you in because this is some silly as shit, that guy who died. Right, that's something they've never seen before. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of scary looking. Like infectious, we don't know. Right. But, but uh... <laughs> Max was suddenly afflicted. <laughs> It's like I was going back in time in slow motion. Someone just, I mean, rewound, was... someone just rewound me. Did you have an instant replay going on there? Uh, then we do another little scene break, and uh, Nolan's wife, whose name I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. Norma, his... maybe. <laughs> I don't think her name is Norma. Let's see. I, I, I was going to say... Lila. Is it Lila? Yeah. Okay. What were you going to say? <laughs> I don't know. For some reason, the name Sally came to mind, but I think that's just because of the prologue. Yeah, yeah, probably. Imagine if every female was named Sally, Sally in the sand. That would be really confusing. <laughs> Metal Sally. 
<laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we get the same break with Phil at the, uh, the the Nables house. Right, and she's taking and care of these kids. Do you remember what's going on in this scene? Yeah, she's watching, like, Days of Our Lives or yeah. some soap opera, and she's excited because she hopes the lady doesn't come home because she can watch it on the color television. But the baby wakes up coughing, and she's assuming the baby has croup. So she goes in there and she whacks the crap out of the back of the baby, which is what you're supposed to do if a baby has croup. It's just not un... un yeah, I know. But the baby whacks up a whole wad of phlegm. Yeah, it's like a bone of lettuce. Yeah. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> like I said, I don't remember this chapter too well. I just remember she was whacking the shit out of the baby. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, calm down. Which, if the baby has croup, that's what you're supposed to do, so... Any excuse to hit a baby, am I right? Of course. Am I How did right? you know? How did you know? <laughs> so the next chapter, chapter full, we get a. Well, what are we in? Like some type of base, some type of encampment. Yeah, I think we're back at the original base. Is, where this, the, is that what this is? Yeah, and they're looking at all the dead people that are down underneath yeah, the ground. Yeah, this guy, uh, Salkley, he's watching a video uh, monitors from right. the, the cafeteria. And so many like scientists and military personnel will drowning in the soup. Yeah. He just keeps looking at all these faces in soup. Right. You have to wonder, what's in this soup? <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat the soup, people. Makes me think of that, that scene in the movie, uh, The Jolk. Have you seen that? A long, well, long time ago. He's at the gas ago. station, and that sniper will keep trying to hit him, but he's hitting the cans. And he's like, no one go by the cans! <laughs> that man hates the cans! <laughs> Don't go by the soup. Okay? <laughs> One of the best scenes in that movie. <laughs> uh, but he's like, he's just pissed this guy stonkily. He's pissed off watching these computers because he's just found out about that cop. He, well, he's found out that the guy escaped and he says, well, where the hell is your security? He's talking to somebody. Though. Yeah. Who's he talking to? I, some other dude. I don't some know. Some guy he's like reporting to him. Yeah. And he's like, we just picked up a cop who went and warned the uh, people about the health department. Right. But then now we have to imagine before we picked up this cop, how many... Uh, he patrols all of yeah. East Texas. How many other people did he see? How many people did he pull over who right. he infected? I mean, this is how fast this shit spreads. It's almost like we should stay the fuck home. What? <laughs> He's also watching monkeys on the computer. What's going on with that? Well, their monkeys are, are they, down there for probably research purposes. Do you think they're scientists? I don't think the monkeys are the scientists. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the end twist it turns out we will the real specimen <laughs> but he also finds out that his son-in-law who was one of the researchers has shot himself in the eye and he's like well great how am i gonna go tell my daughter that <laughs> well maybe he's like great <laughs> maybe <laughs> who knows the type of son-in-law that was <laughs> if uh, sitcoms have taught me anything every son-in-law is a bastard of course so now we get to uh, Chapel 5, which is the last chapter that we uh, read for this episode of the right. podcast. And, and it's... it is about... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I began talking. Go. Uh, it's about Larry Underwood, which was the quote. And what's that called again? I don't know. The quote at the beginning of a book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really uh, not sure. <laughs> I, knew, I knew it at one point. Yeah, I'm sure if you said the word, I'd be like, oh, yeah. Oh, is that how it will? Yeah, yes. he's a uh, up-and-coming uh, country musician. He's some sort of musician. What do you mean by that? He's a musician. Isn't he a country musician? I don't know. I thought he was rock and roll. Maybe. You might be right. I, th I just think his, la his name looks like Underwood. a country. Even Lily. Larry. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Uh, one thing that immediately struck out to me is he is a Yankees fan. Oh he's not a villain. God. What's going on with this? This is a novel written by Stephen King. <laughs> and Natalia is Boston Red Sox fan. And people say you can't separate the alt from the eldest. ta -da! Look at this. This is a perfect example. Stephen King is writing a protagonist who likes the Yankees. I know. That's crazy. I am. Maybe he was afflicted. It must have been a difficult novel to write. <laughs> Tabitha, what am I going to do? <laughs> That's not how he sounds at all. <laughs> Tabitha. <laughs> he doesn't sound anything like that. Yeah, but the whole thing going on with Lily Underwood is he uh, he just recorded this song that is certainly a hit. I mean, he's, right. he's been struggling how long? A while. Not yeah. making any su success, being effective, but suddenly, suddenly the song, Baby, Can You Dig Your Man?, is like the number one song playing on the radio right now. Everybody's talking about it. People are hounding him on the street. 
uh, like people who he simply even talked to, like, hey, I'm your distant eighth cousin removed. Right. Uh, he recalls his album called uh, Pocket Savior. Is that what it's called? I believe so. What's it called? Pocket Savior. Yeah. <laughs> He does his, uh, like, week-long penalty right. on the beach. He spends every dime he made on the record. He's, uh, broke. But, Surprise. like, some friend takes him out for right, a walk. He's like, he's like listen, you, really, you've spent two million dollars on cocaine in the last 12 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have no money. You, you better knock this shit off right now. But it's pretty funny because, like, he's like... I'm not even your friend. In fact, I don't like you. In fact, I've slept with your wife. I don't know. Like, he keeps saying all these things that he hates about right. him. And the guy's like, I, I don't care. I'm not your friend either, bud. Yeah. So he uh, listens to uh, this mysterious enemy of his. And uh, he goes home to his mom. And he goes up to the apartment. And one of the one of the notes I took about this chapter was, he, he, like, in his uh, internal monologue, he's like... Have my mom's boobs gotten bigger? <laughs> yeah. What was going on with that? I don't you know, know. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, he does. He says, it looks like her chest has gotten bigger. <laughs> what? what? I don't think my mouth can fit out of these now. <laughs> Maybe my mouth's gotten bigger. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And there's also a lot of, uh, oh, the, the mom is really unhappy with this song that he's written, that he's performed. Everybody because... seems to be unhappy with him for this song he's really? written. Really? It seems that way. It seems like... I didn't get that. Everybody that's talked to him doesn't like the song because it's not him. They think he sounds like a black man as he sings. Yeah. Although that's not the rule they use. No. They like to call it n world music. Right. Especially his medal, which he says many times in this chapter. And it's like, okay, Stephen King. We, we get, get it. it. Sometimes people are racist. Those other ways you can share that besides just saying this one world over and right. over and over. It's not that. I mean, you'll just, uh, at a certain point, you just, be, you just sound desperately edgy. <laughs> I don't know. And then uh, the uh, country single, he decides, ah, fuck it. And he goes to sleep for 18 hours. And that's how the chapel ends. Right. But, I mean, he's driven all the way across country. He went from California all yeah, the way to Salt New Lake York. <laughs> all the way to New York to <laughs> be with his mom. It's not a familial at all. The uh, the sensation of uh, something really good happening in your career after all uh, a bunch of shit happens, and then just as things were really beginning to move, a plague hits. <laughs> what? But, uh, I have no way to relate to that. Not at all. Whatsoever. But if you're one of the uh, many companies reading my in Hollywood reading my new novel, please don't die. <laughs> <laughs> please and continue please to don't, make movies. And I please need don't money. go under. <laughs> Wood. <laughs> yes. Yes. Very nice. And that's where the stand ends in this episode. We have... This is where the stand stands? <laughs> we have like a... Like 1,100 little pages Oh, is that go. all? I assume we'll get this all done by next week. Of course oh, not. <laughs> I'm glad you just whacked yourself in the leg with your book. <laughs> oh, man. This is a heavy book. Uh, it's thick. T-H-I-C-C is how I would spell that. Nice. Thank you. When any final impressions and... Do you, no, I, it's been like a probably a couple of weeks since I read it originally when we were originally going to podcast the about 50 it. fifty pages before the plague hit. And before we thought, the plague hmm, hit, maybe we should hold back. <laughs> no, well, then we got both got busy. Yeah, and then now we're here. But I, I know at the time I was like, I want to read more. I want to read more. Let's hurry up and record so I can read more. It's written really well. Yeah. I'm liking it. I have yeah. nothing else to say. I mean, it just it fills 50 pages. We right. Don't have, um, we're going to be doing this a lot, probably, maybe even multiple times a week, depending on what time we have and how yeah. if I can edit these in time. Uh, we will probably do a few uh, behind the scenes episodes, like maybe. like a house, like things that happened before the book came out with Stephen King, because I know there's a lot of info. We already talked about the uh, Patty Hulst novel that was abandoned. Right. Really bummed about that. Um, in the meantime, uh, stay safe and don't die. Stay safe and don't die. Wash your hands. Stay the fuck home. And if you want to read along with us, I highly suggest an electronic book. <laughs> yeah, she has the ebook. I have the hardback. <laughs> He's going to kill himself reading the hardback. <laughs> He's going to drop it on his face one day. Mind. At the beginning, you said I was going to kill you. Now I'm going to kill myself. What is this? A middle suicide? It might be. Yeah, it might be. Uh, <laughs> 
household abuse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. It's uh, rolling for a long run. Not just with this book, but with uh, Reality. everything else going on. Mm-hmm. And you don't need a stupid Stephen King comedy podcast to tell you that. Uh, if you have spill money, I doubt you do. But if you do, we do have a Patreon. Patreon.com slash PMM Publishing. Uh, you could buy a book from us directly. We all sometimes going out to the post office with um, our I hazmat tend, suits yeah, on. Yeah, I tend to go out about once a week to mail books. You can buy a book directly from us at a perpetualpublishing.com slash shop. Yes. Uh, or you can just go to the main page. Right. And I mean, and of course, electronic books will come to you instantaneously. Yeah. So. Um, that's really about it. Uh, oh, we do have a Facebook group that if you want to talk to us. And as a little memo to the Stephen King dick joke community, <laughs> uh, Stephen King, I don't know what it's called. It's Castle Rock Radio for fans of Stephen King dick jokes and podcasts. Yeah, you know that. <laughs> that's, that's it. So yeah. See ya sometime, hopefully. Goodbye. Bye. And now, by request from Bay Ridge, Larry Underwood, and Baby, can you dig your man? Well, Baby, can you? Thank you.